Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Tuesday, February 13th, 2018, episode 26. You give us 20 minutes and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yeah, maybe a little lulls. And we got some lulls today. We, we got some interesting lulls. So today's show is titled, With Banks Like These, Who Needs Totalitarian Regimes? I have a feeling that the top story in the show is, along with the second story, which you know, I'll get to, it's kind of kind of combats the first story that that may very well be a big topic that we're going to have for I'm thinking this is an is daily Thursday event because you got a you got a shorter leash and then you got a maybe off the leash one after the other both related to one entity and I'll go ahead and say it the entity that we're going to talk about is the World Bank so you can get show notes at isheadlines.com or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video or go to istate.tv slash H026. You can also find our audio podcast show on iTunes by searching for iState and you'll find the show headlines you may have missed as well as our other show is daily and i will say about the headlines you may have missed show what you hear on that nothing but headlines so you won't hear any of this introduction on the headlines you may have on the audio version you'll only hear those 20 minutes of headlines nor will you hear the little ending that you hear on youtube or the larger ending that you'll hear on facebook and by the way you missed about a minute or two or so of the opening of the show if you're watching this on youtube if you'd like to hear the fullest version of the show then you're going to want to go to facebook and find me paul gordon i look like the guy in the picture there uh overlooking the the headline title there uh and uh friend request me you don't have to necessarily friend request me though you can follow me because the settings are on global so you can see it anyway but if you do friend request me as a result of this show please let me know that way if i look at your profile and mm, i have some things that maybe i don't want to friend but i'm a little bit more open to friend requests if i know it's it's from the show so with that now ladies and gentlemen here is your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed World Bank announces large-scale social engineering program. Now, that's my title. Now, before I get to what I had to say about this, I'm going to read the title from SmartCitiesDive.com, and their headline is World Bank GEF Launch Urban Sustainability Framework. I think in my title is much more accurate. So it looks like the World Bank is about to make big moves to ratchet up its social engineering program, and it will do so in the name of helping people and saving the planet. Of course. I mean, if you're going to take control over people's lives and try to micromanage how they see the world and how they interact with others, you got to give them a Benny, even if it's a total lying Benny. It's for the children. So using words like sustainability, economic competitiveness, environment and resource efficiency, and social inclusiveness, the World Bank has essentially announced its intentions to use its state-supported and protected near monopoly on international capital resources to browbeat, bully, and control communities to conform to the World Bank. You know, it's kind of... In a way, it's it's how the federal government controls state governments and local governments, and also how state governments control local governments. They don't they don't 
pass mandates that you must do this or you must do that. They just say, hey, you don't have to do this, but if you do, if you do. You know that money that we took from you and put in our coffers and you know how sometimes we give you some of that money back? Yeah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's power through economic pressure here. But in the case of the World Bank, they actually have guns backing them up. And it's largely in part, in, in large part, I should say, the, the, the U.S., United States, America's military. So I'll read a little bit from smartcitiesdive.com just so you can hear how they're playing this. The World Bank and Environmental Advocacy Group Global Environmental Facility, GEF, or GEF, I'm calling them GEF, announced the launch of a new urban sustainability framework during the World Urban Forum. The guide is designed to help cities become more sustainable through a four-stage approach. Create a vision for that sustainability. Determine financing to put plans into practice. In other words, create programs that you know you'll get money from the World Bank to finance under terms and conditions which may make you a slave to the World Bank for life. But never mind that. Monitor and evaluate implementation. Now, now that I've set you up with the doom and gloom and the fear porn, I'm going to do something that not another, a lot of uh, news outlets uh, do out there. And I don't call myself a news outlet. This is, we're, we're mostly opinion here. But uh, be that as it may, as a, as, a, as, a, as a somewhat news entity, I'm going to do something that even somewhat news entities don't do. I'm going to offer the second headline. Ready? Breaking the world banking cabal with the blockchain. So, you see a little picture there. I don't know if you get that. That's a symbol of the world bank. And it's broken in half by, like, blockchain-y stuff. Okay, that's generic computer code blockchain -y stuff. Just trust me. Just go with it. The World Bank, the IMF, and if you're, by the way, I'm sorry, if you're listening on audio, you don't know what I was just, just talking about, but there's a picture of the World Bank image split in half, and it shows some computer code between it. That's, that's my symbol. The World Bank, the IMF, and other international banking entities use the power of lending to manipulate and control the actions of whole nations, even dictating to them what programs the government should have and which they should not. Their power to control communities and nations through banking has been well documented by numerous sources, including the Corbett Report, and I link in this article to uh, the the Corbett Report, expo ex I guess they're it would be their expose of, of the World Bank. Now, the article that, that we've actually excerpted from is from fastcompany.com, and what it actually addresses is how blockchain financial systems could empower communities and individuals in areas of the world where access to capital or to banking is either not available or simply out of reach. Now, I want to go beyond that. And the implication is clearly there. I want to go beyond that to the power of the blockchain to offer financing options to people who otherwise wouldn't have it. Go beyond that to how the blockchain can fundamentally undermine the power of these international banking entities with the World Bank and the IMF being the biggest offenders. Now, this is... Uh, th this is... This is why the World Bank and the IMF are so openly calling for regulations of cryptocurrencies and blockchain because they understand fully well how this technology could fundamentally undermine their power to control whole nations uh, through lending. So instead of going to the World Bank or the IMF with their own interest rates, their, their, their terms of loan repayment that keep you indebted to them for decades, if not technically forever, communities can turn to blockchain financing as a way to get around these entities that are designed in the first place to use their capital power to socially engineer a world that continues to favor the owners and managers of these international banking entities. And don't kid yourself. That whole, if we go back to our first story there, the, peer, the fear porn story, 
that whole urban sustainability framework, uh, there's some degree of efficiency they'd like to see. And they would like to see human beings that are capable of producing and buying and being sold and whatnot. But uh, it's all to their end to keep them in power, to keep them protected from naked competition. Now we get to our next story. Transparent, bendable, stretchy, and electric reality. Researchers out of Carnegie Mellon have developed a new type of conductive thin film that allows for high electric conductivity, transparency, flexibility, and ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves. They're even flexible. Or stretch me. Stretchable. That's right there. Stretchable. And this is from Fizz.org. Carnegie Mellon, Mellon University's Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Carmel Majidi, and his research team have developed conductive thin films that have the unique combination of properties needed for these next generation technologies. High electrical conductivity, visual imperceptibility, low mechanical stiffness, and high elasticity. Using a laser-based microfabrication technique, the team achieved these properties by coating the surface of a thin rubber film with a fine grid of metal, a eutectic alloy of gallium and indium, e that is liquid at room temperature. Cool beans, man. Cool beans. So, <coughs> let's get to Somalia. That's right. All these little statists that want to tell you to go to Somalia? Move to Somalia. You don't want to move to Somalia, but you do want to move to a part of Somalia. I mean, well, you don't necessarily want to, but Somaliland. It's a place that, that we've been following. Uh, it has... I'll say it has elements of statelessness to it. I wouldn't strictly call it stateless, but it's definitely far less statey than than where you're living now, most likely. So Somalia, Somaliland talks to resume with Swiss mediator. Apparently, talks between Somalia and Somaliland have broken down in large part due to the mistrust Somaliland places on the mediator of the talks, Turkey a.k.a. the Turk Reich. You know how much I love the Turk Reich. And again, I should repeat, I have nothing against the Turks in general. I do have plenty against the Erdogan regime, which is what I'm calling the Turk Reich. The talks are set to resume with a new mediator, Switzerland. Well, hey, you, you, you can't get any more neutral than that. <clears throat> and you can read more about these talks at Somaliland Press. Dot com and and for those that uh, advocate some form of of I'll say voluntary association governance I Ten would minutes. highly recommend that you go to somalilandpress.com and follow what they're doing Speaking of experiments in statelessness Rahava strives to overcome war in Make Rahava Green Again campaign <laughs> So uh, I got this from their site, which is called Roginfo, R-O-J-I-N-F-O.com. And it is pronounced Rajava. I keep saying Rajava, but it is Rajava. Uh, but it's in French, but you can use a translator to, to actually read it. So while war tears around them and embargoes remain to stifle them, the people of Rajava... Rojava, are pushing ahead with their grand experiment in statelessness. Here's an excerpt from an article in Rojinfo.com about a campaign the people of Rojava are running called Make Rojava Green Again. Now, how perfect is that? They've, they're taking a totally nationalistic, state on state face slogan, Make America Great Again, and they're turning it completely on their head with Make Rojava Green Again. Bravo, you know. Bravo. I got to give them points for that. That was pretty good. As part of their overall strategy to work towards voluntary, direct democracy communities, Rojavans are working to build healthier, more self-sustaining. And now, 
self-sustaining. Self-sustaining in a free association sense of that term and not a global command and control sense of that term as used by global entities like the World Bank. So they're, they want to create these self-sustaining environments. And this campaign is, is part of that strategy. So I'll just read briefly from this. The attempts of the Turkish and Syrian regimes to strangle the Rojava revolutionary revolution by military, political, and economic attacks, the war against da Daesh, and the KDB-supported embargo in South Kurdistan create difficult conditions for ecological development from Rojava. Nevertheless, many projects are underway, such as the reforestation of the territory, the creation of natural reserves, and management infrastructure and waste sorting objectives that are currently difficult to achieve. The product judge the projects of most regional committees are still at a preparatory stage or are just beginning to put into place. And you can read more uh, uh, in, in our show notes, uh, which I've already told you how to get to those. And there's a video on here as well for you to watch. Russians cling to Turk Reich alliance in war against Afrin. So it looks like the Russians are all in with the Turk Reich. And apparently, all in with deviating from reality completely by declaring that the Russia-Turkey-Iran alliance in Syria is fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. You have situations where you have Iranian-backed fighters directly battling Turkey and Afrin. Uh, you have... <laughs> Ah, uh, you have issues, I'll just say. Issues. And remember, Turkey not so long ago shot down a Russian plane. But the Russians want you to believe that it's fine, everything's fine. And this may very well be for for, for PR because you have a, an election coming up with Putin. He's going to win the election. And he'd like to cheat as little as possible to get the overwhelming results that he'd like to see. And, you know, the less he gets to cheat, the, the more authentic his overwhelming victory will be. And that's that's what's going on here. So you have uh, the, the Russian deputy uh, presidential spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, saying, As you may know, the Russian president has for the past few weeks maintained regular contacts with his Turkish and Iranian counterparts. This work go on. Will go on. It is expected to provide significant support for further peacemaking activity within the framework of UN efforts in Syria. Let's just ignore the fact that you know Turkey's just killing people in Afrin, and and also uh, the, the Turk Reich is getting killed as well. That's another show altogether. Iowa's move to end permit-based gun carry upsets Prague media writer. Kathy Obradovich. So one of the things that I'm trying to do on iState is I'm really, I'm, I'm, I like the uh, personal accountability tactic, which is, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go after the Des Moines Register directly. That's who she wrote for here, but uh, uh, somewhat indirectly. But really, the responsibility goes right on the head of, of Kathy Obradovich for, for writing this, this pule. I'll just Five read minutes. you this in part because because there's and there is some some significant news that she actually uh, reveals here in between her her screed. Here's an answer to the state of Iowa's budget program. Sal naming rights for the Iowa State Capitol. Smith and Wesson or Glock should be willing to pony up a tidy sum. Given all the extra sales they can expect, thanks to the efforts of Republican lawmakers, you dumb ninny. You don't realize they get more sales when people are, are, are threatening or carrying through with gun control legislation, you ninny poop. Uh, did I say ninny poop? I did. In the span of just a few hours in the Iowa Senate last week, GOP senators advanced proposals to dramatically expand the freedom to carry without pesky, or she says pesky permit. She means that sar sarcastically, of course, and curtail the government's ability to impose restrictions. That's what they're doing, and I applaud them for it. And, and, and I wrote a whole thing here, but... Uh, I'll let you read it in the show notes. I'm not nice to Kathy, and and I, and she's a gun grabber, so I'm not going to be nice to gun grabbers. I will uh, I will uh, close with this on this story. If you live in Iowa and you know Kathy Obradovich, stay the heck away from her because she's acting for a day that one day 
her police state will come and she will be able to then become the police state informant she clearly, deep down, wants to be. Don't trust her. Don't associate with her. Gun grabbers are never to be trusted. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your moment of lulls. Couple exposed, trying to hide home behind. <clears throat> Pardon me. I got the calls today. That sucks. Let's try this again. Couple exposed, trying to hide home behind fake garage door. And you can't blame this British couple for trying to hide their business from the prying eyes of a regulatory busybody bureaucracy. Uh, they went to great lengths to conceal their domestic living arrangements from a local town government. What they did was they actually they actually put up a fake garage door in front of their home to conceal the fact that they were a home and not a garage. So the council rained down its terror of fines and now all is well. Once again in the sleepy town of, of Leicester. And there's more on the story from The Guardian, which is linked to in, in this article. And the article is linked in the show notes and you know how to get the show notes just go to istate.tv uh, slash h <laughs> what is it uh <laughs> slash h o two, two minutes i forgot the, the the number of the show cuomo cuomo looks to escape fed tax changes by creating voluntary payroll tax so what cuomo wants to you do is try to figure out a way to protect new yorkers from the new federal tax laws that will no longer allow you to deduct state income taxes when it comes time to pay federal taxes now ladies and gentlemen of course you, you probably already know i'm not for taxes of any kind but but watching these uh big tax states uh squirm trying to hide the pain the direct pain from the people that they've been gouging is is a source of much joy i suppose if i lived in one of those big tax stakes i i may not be so joyful but i don't so uh it is it is nice when the 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 gouging that you're doing is more directly felt by the people one that, minute that you're gouging right now that's kind of being hidden from them because they can declare the exorbitant state taxes as a tax write-off for federal taxes. So they end up, I guess you could say, they, they don't pay federal taxes. So they come out feeling like they're not being hit too hard by it. Well, with these new changes, whatever the motivation behind it was, and I'm sure it's political, I don't care. 30 seconds. With these new changes... They now have to, they, they they now have to face the the brunt of their decisions. Most of these people chose these high taxes because they voted for these people they knew were going to raise taxes. So just a couple quick uh, headlines that we didn't get to here. We have building structures at atomic level now possible thanks to microscopy discovery and uh, national. Reciprocity on rights to carry triggers police chiefs. And you know what that beep means. When you hear the beep, 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 you know it's over. It's over. That's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you would like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for February 13th, 2018, or check out the links to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream as well as the uh, YouTube video. Or you can go to istate.tv slash h026. And finally, you can find our audio podcast show on iTunes by searching for iState. Now, the audio version only has the 20 minutes of headlines. Nothing more, nothing less. Just the 20 minutes of headline. No introduction, no ending, just pure 20 minutes of headlines. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. So until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Paul Gordon's Facebook page, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great 
rest of your day, fellow iStaters.